Most days when kindergarten class lets out, five-year-old Amanda Shook of Owasa, Michigan, rides a school bus a few miles to another school much closer to her home, where her mom picks her up. But neither Amanda nor her parents, Andrea and Joe Shook, were prepared for what happened on the afternoon of January 15th, 1993. Shiawassee County Dispatcher Michelle Spencer took the call. He didn't do it on purpose. He probably came to the field, but Ryan's dad took me home. Okay, what is your name? Amanda Shook and my number. I can remember hearing this little voice, and it was so shaky. I had to find out why she was there, and I had to find out if I couldn't help her somehow feel safer. Did your mom leave you a note or anything? No. Okay, do you have any idea where she might go? No, she probably went to the school. Oh, you think she's there looking for you? Yes. Okay. What school do you go to, Amanda? Bentley. The Bentley School? Do you go to school all day? I don't know how much hours were if we stay there. Probably just come home for lunch, Amanda? Yes, and I'm hungry, too. And you're hungry, too? Are you inside your house? Yes. The other dispatcher on duty that day was Judy Voorhees. I called the school, and they were very cooperative, went out and tried to see if we could locate the mother, see if she was sitting out there waiting for Amanda, but they had no luck. They didn't, couldn't find her car. Is the police there? Yeah, you're talking to the police. That's me. Okay. Is there any way? I did talk with someone that knew the Shook family, so she gave me the information of where Dad worked. Do you have any brothers and sisters? Yes. You do? Two brothers. Uh, are brown? I don't hear any sisters. I did call her father, but he was gone to lunch. So I left a message and told him I needed to speak with him. It was very important. Is your daddy's first name Joe? Yeah. Is it? Okay. I know that. Well, because that's what 911 tells us. It tells us what your daddy's name is. I wanted her to stay with me on the phone where I knew she'd be okay. I felt that she could be in a lot more danger if she left that house and, and went searching for her mom. So you just stay with me so I know you're okay. I'm okay, but it's really scary. Yeah, I know. It is scary sometimes, but that's okay. You did the right thing. Did they teach you how to use 911 at school? I just, no, I just learned in my mind. Oh, good. That's good. So tell me what else you did in school today. I watched a movie. Well, what kind of movie did you get to see? Oh, today I got to see a penguin one. Oh. The little babies and the parents that they would never see each other again. Amanda, when you have to come home, do you go to a neighbor's house or anything? If your mommy's not home? No. Oh, okay. How about a grandma or grandpa? Do you have a grandma or grandpa in town? Yeah. Do they I don't know their number. Oh, okay. Okay, do you know their name? Yeah, I have one grandpa. Oh, he died. And the other one, he's not real, my grandpa. I don't know what to do. Well, just hold on, because I think I have your daddy on another phone. 
Daddy? Yeah. Her father called me back just a few minutes later, and he was very concerned. So you're not scared anymore? I was quite flabbergasted because we had never put her in that type of predicament. And I could just imagine the fear that she must be feeling at the time. What is he going to do with you? Oh, I don't think he's going to do anything. I just think he wants to make sure you're not scared. When is he going to be here? Well, we're going to we're gonna find out so that you'll know. And I'll just stay right on the phone with you until he gets there. Would that be okay? Yeah. And you could just talk to me some more. You know what? What? I could go over my neighbors. Well, I think if you want to just wait a few minutes, we'll be able to find your mom. I sat in the truck waiting for her, watching these other kids get off the buses, and when she didn't get off, I thought something really awful could have happened. I thought I'd wait a few more minutes. And this lady comes out and asks me if I was Amanda Shook's mother. I instantly knew if something wasn't right. On the phone with 911, she's fine. How did she get home? I don't know. But okay. Get Thank you. No, bye bye. Put it better with someone with me. Oh, I know it is. We'll get somebody to your house real fast. I'm scared to call you because oh. I you don't have to be afraid to call. No, we'll help you. We're not going to arrest your mom. She was afraid to call 911, and I think a lot of kids are. But if they really feel that they need help, we're there. If this is not a 911 situation, we'll have to tell them that. But we'll do our best. Did you walk all the way home? No. Well, how'd you get to your house? I told you. Oh. My dad took me. Oh, I see. I called 911. Is that your dad? Hello? Hi. Hi. Is this Mrs. Shook? Yes, it is. Oh, good. I'm glad you're there. Oh, my. I've been talking to your daughter. She was very scared. She's a very good girl. Oh, I'm proud of her. I was so glad that she was okay. And Amanda just had this smile on her face that she was glad I was there. And that made me feel really good. I was happy when my mommy got home, and I was very, very, very happy. I think Amanda did a great job. She had composure, even though she was obviously upset. I'm not saying that all situations like this should be called into 911, but at five years old, she was there alone, and she had no one else apparently to turn to. She trusted us enough to make that call. We went to the carnival and we had the... We had a lot of talks about what to do if something like this were to happen again. We told her specifically that she wasn't to take a ride home from anybody and that she was to be on the bus on the regular routine every day. Now she has phone numbers listed on the refrigerator to call her grandmother or even a neighbor. I don't think she'll have to use 911 again. <laughs> you hey, I know a song of Clack Clack. You do. They didn't criticize her for calling 911 because she was a five-year-old and that she may have been playing on the phone. These people took her very seriously. And I appreciate the fact that they were there for her. I've never been home alone before. I never want to be home alone again. Next. She told her purple color like she was just choking. We knew her heart condition was serious and we thought she was having a heart attack. Mommy! 